How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and today I'd like to give a quick primer on NDs and a few other types of filters you can use to mitigate exposure. Now to help me go over NDs today, I have a special guest joining me, my grandma. Hello everyone. She's new to the industry and wants to get up to speed. What do I need to use NDs for? NDs are pretty much a necessity in the world of video. This is because we have to use a specific shutter speed to emulate natural looking motion blur. One dead giveaway for amateur footage is an overly snappy shutter speed, so selecting the right amount of motion blur is important to consider when shooting your projects. How do I know what shutter speed to use? A good rule of thumb is to set your shutter to double your frame rate, or you can also opt to use shutter angle, which is what I do because shutter angle is relative to the frame rate, so motion blur remains consistent if I bounce back and forth between different frame rates. Since the majority of our content is shot in 24p, we generally use a shutter of 1 over 48 or a shutter angle of 180 degrees. Now this can vary from project to project for creative reasons, but we'll stick with that for now. Since camera sensors are pretty sensitive nowadays, chances are you'll be pretty overexposed if you're locked in at a shutter of 1 over 48. This is where ND filters come in. These reduce the amount of light entering the lens so you can lower your exposure to the correct level. My NDs come in the form of 4x5 filters, and for that, we'll need a matte box. What's the matte box for? I thought it was just for, uh, making the camera look cool. Believe it or not, these things do more than simply making your camera look cool. One of their primary functions is to house filters. This matte box is designed to hold 4x5 filters, the industry standard. What about 4x4 filters? I'd steer clear of 4x4 sizes, you almost never see them on a professional set, and 4x5 filters are much easier to come by. I'd also like to point out that not all NDs are created equal. Older NDs only decrease light in the visible spectrum, and this is business as usual, but considering the advent of digital technology, we must now be aware of infrared light. Infrared is invisible to our eyes, but camera sensors are very sensitive to these wavelengths. As regular NDs block more light, most of the infrared light is passed through, giving a deep magenta cast, especially to objects that have a darker tonal value, such as black. This is called IR pollution. As the amount of visible light decreases, it also emphasizes the infrared. This is where IR NDs come into play. These take into account the infrared spectrum and suppress these wavelengths as visible light is reduced. Although most do a good job with cutting IR contamination, they usually also come with some sort of color shift. To demonstrate this, we tested five sets of NDs, regular Tiffin NDs, Schneider Platinum and Rhodiums, Format High Tech Firecrest NDs, and Tokina Pro IR NDs. When testing NDs, I'm mainly looking for neutrality, so we shot a control with no filter so we could see how each ND reacted. We shot in one stop increments up to 2.1 or seven stops. The only exception was for Tiffin, our set only went up to 1.5, so we stacked the last two series. I chose to shoot on the Pocket 6K since the sensor lacks an IR cut filter, so that way we can better analyze the effects of IR with each set. Note that there isn't a universal solution to IR since sensors can vary from camera to camera. Some respond better than others, so your results may vary. I also want to point out that I matched exposure on all the filters in post so that we're only analyzing color and neutrality. Most filters aren't quite exact when reducing by full stops. Some get close, but the majority needed small adjustments here and there. Starting with the Tiffin NDs, we can see the IR quickly creeping in at around 0.9 and with the vengeance. As we settle into our higher densities, we can see the infrared polluting the entire image. It's actually a pretty interesting look, although it's not something I would default to every time. Our talent's black shirt and the greenery in the background shift deep magenta that would be nearly impossible to grade out in post. What do you think, Grandma? No, I don't think so. The Schneider Platinums were among the first generation of IRNDs. Now, although these are great at slowing down IR contamination, they usually also introduce a slight color cast to compensate for the infrared suppression. As we go up in density, we can see the filters start pushing slightly green and also reducing saturation. This set actually required the least adjustment in post and have excellent transmission filter to filter. Firecrest NDs were actually pretty consistent throughout the test. There was a slight push towards blue at 1.5, but nothing that I would consider concerning. This set actually required the most adjustment in post since they were overall a bit darker than advertised. Moving on to the Schneider Rhodiums, which is my personal set. These are full spectrum NDs, which decrease the entire spectrum as a whole rather than putting an emphasis on suppressing IR wavelengths. I first saw these NDs at NAB a few years back and was really impressed with the neutrality from filter to filter. Overall, they run ever so slightly magenta. At 1.8, the rhodiums appear to push green, but shift back to magenta at 2.1 where it looks like the infrared starts peeking through. 
Finally, we looked at the Tokina Pro IR NDs. These did exceptionally well and were by far the most consistent filter to filter. It looks like the higher densities increase in warmth without the dreaded magenta shift, and they have a really beautiful quality that I find really pleasing, and under normal circumstances, you wouldn't be able to tell. If I were in the market for a new set of NDs, these or the rhodiums would be the ones I'd be looking at. Wow, that Chokina really looks great. There are a few other methods of ND technology nowadays, one of the most popular being variable NDs, which are just two sets of polarizers reacting to one another. These max out the convenience factor, but you start introducing a lot of variables when using variable NDs, excuse the pun. Since variable NDs are two stacked polarizers, you're more prone to reflections, you run the risk of cross polarization, and there's generally always some sort of color cast. Now that's not to say I refuse to use variable NDs, I just prefer not to if I can. Some newer cameras like the FX9 have an electronic variable ND. Now I love these kinds of variable NDs because they offer all the convenience of a traditional variable ND without all the emotional baggage. It's essentially a small screen that covers the sensor and increases in density as more voltage is applied, and it gives you extremely fine control over exposure. Now this screen does introduce a slight color cast to the image, but is electronically compensated for. When you see it in action, you can see that the image remains pretty neutral. On the higher end of the spectrum, Panavision has their own rental only option, which is a liquid crystal ND that features six stops of control. I really like the idea of electronic variable NDs. The stepless ramping gives for smooth control so that you can do things like a depth of field rack, which makes for a really immersive effect. So grandma, what do you think? Wow, that was really helpful. Now I know all about NDs. I know purchasing an entire set of NDs can be a tough pill to swallow, but these things should last you for the rest of your career in the same way a good tripod will never go out of style. Like I always say, buy it once so you never have to buy it again. Neutrality is a huge factor to consider when looking at NDs. Yes, color cast can easily be corrected in post, but it's important to remember that not all jobs will have the luxury of a colorist or even an editor who will do a color pass for that matter. It's all about taking variables out of the equation to make yourself look good as the DP. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. My grandson is smart kid, smart man. Follow him or whatever he does, because he is good. He has all these camera equipment, he's buying all this camera equipment and to use for for your information. So follow him. Whatever he does, ask questions or if you need some something you need to know, ask questions, then he will answer you back.